morning, everybody. Wow, it's just one beautiful day in the North Country. It's going to be uh, almost a record high here, 65, 70 degrees. It's uh, great to enjoy this time of weather, this time of year. Uh, let me call this meeting to order. Um, the letters of communication board. I think what I'd like to do is make a, a comment this morning that Mr. Hooper, who's our county legislator, is here this morning. Um, maybe Mr. Hooper would like to make a comment to us. I appreciate you coming, sir. To, as a representative of the area. Um. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, as you know, I have a lot of interest in what the Bridge and Port Authority does and a lot of activity going on at the airport right now, so I'm watching that be close. Right. Thank you, Tom. Nice to see you again. Um, Wait, any letters that you want to share with us? Uh, there are a couple things in the uh, board communication file. Um, a thank you letter uh, to the editor and to the Bridge and Port Authority from the uh, Ogdensburg City School District regarding the use of the field. Um, news articles during the period as well. I think if I was to make an opening comment this morning, it would obviously be uh, enthusiasm for this board and for Augsburg in the area is, is, is our airport project. But we also realize the element of this organization is we, other, we have other things that, that we have to do on a daily basis and doing well every day. And so making light of the excitement of the airport project, whatever, we have to make sure we stay focused on the other elements of our organization. But i am take that away, the excitement, we really enjoy this excitement. Uh, because I think the area is looking to us to provide some leadership and to provide some economic growth that this area desperately needs. Uh, the sad news for our area, obviously, it was just recently announced down in, uh, in Messina. I feel bad for those folks in that area that they lost over 200 some odd jobs and uh, how they recovered from that, I, I don't know. But uh, I'm saddened for those people that all of a sudden they, they have to rethink their lives and do things differently in a different way. And, and so uh, we'll have to do our business the way we do, but I just want to share those, uh, share those thoughts with the, uh, with the public. Uh, we have approval minutes. Uh, there's no minutes to approve. Okay. If any, there's a word. Um, gross solar presentation, Wade? Uh, I don't see gross solar here yet. Okay. So, so uh, let's go let's to jump right into McFarland Johnson okay, we have Jeff on Hall. the airport. Jeff, nice to see you this morning. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I don't have anything uh, uh, formal for this morning. Just want to give a real quick update on what's going on out at the airport. Out at the airport, um, the uh, terminal expansion is out to bid, and the uh, uh, pre-bid meeting is this afternoon. So we're very anxious to see uh, what kind of turnout we get for that, and uh, who's there, and all that. That will start to give us some clues, maybe how that's that's going to go. So we're uh, very much looking forward to that. Um, the uh, estimate that we provide to the contractors of the range. Uh, for our engineer's estimate is between 2.8 and 3.4 million. So that's about where we expect it to be um, from an estimate perspective uh, with your budget. And we'll have the bid opening on November 23rd, so we'll have an award recommendation for you at the December board meeting. So that's all uh, very exciting and a key part, piece of the puzzle. Our schedule shows the contractor mobilizing in the middle of December so that we're rock and rolling on the terminal, you know, first of the year, plus or minus. So. So today is an informational meeting for the bidders. Is that that, yeah, yeah, informational okay. meeting, uh, meeting, chance for them to ask some questions, yeah. um, all that sort of fun stuff. So, chance for them to see the building also. Well, we're very pleased with the uh, the interest and the excitement uh, from all over the state to, to do the expansion project, whatever, and the prices were, I'll call, reasonable for what they are, and hopefully today will be the same thing, but there will be interest uh, there. That I, I you know, again, it's a big investment in the community, and they'll get a lot of yeah. interest. Yeah. Okay. As far as the runway goes, I think everybody knows it's marching along. If you drive by there, too, there's a lot of dirt moving around, which is, uh, <coughs> see, it's the first time I've been here since they broke ground, so um, I was very happy to, to see it move my own eyes. <coughs> I get a lot of questions back at the office. How's it look? What's going on? Because we get a lot of people involved, as you know. Uh, we are, I think, on a path towards resolving the uh, the gas line issue. We'll get that uh, hammered out, and I think we're very close to having the DOT issues with the right of way. The right of way, I can't even. The right of way transfer, I, you know, you can't make some of this stuff up. DOT owns the pavement. The county owns the right of way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the but transfer I'm the land over to move it back. <laughs> In any event, um, uh, it's marching along. We'll get that resolved, and uh, you know, construction's proceeding on a So. 
Um, with that, I'm happy to take any questions or um, not take any more of your time. I think the first thing that, that we've been out there to, to look at the area and you see the trucks moving, I uh, forget how many trucks they got moving, rotating back and forth. Yeah. And they've been going 22 days as of yesterday. Yeah. And, and I was like, we still got a lot of dirt left. I know. I, I, I mean, they don't realize how much dirt is in a mound. I know. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, and it's like, wow, there's and still it's, a long ways to go. And it's marveling you know. at the depth of one of the cuts that I was driving by this morning. Yeah. yeah. Wonder. Well, the weather's been really good. So, uh, so far, we understand we're on schedule on budget. I think that's yep, the I think, we uh, boy, we're doing great with the weather. I mean, that's that's a big key to the schedule. Is a nice, uh, good weather this fall. So, hopefully, they can do something on it. Amen. Uh, Jeff, one thing, uh, if you would also stress with the contractor, we will also uh, continue to stress it. Is uh, we've had two um, vehicle incidents incidences out there on Route 68 that you may or may not be aware of. Okay. One is where a vehicle wasn't paying attention and I guess rear-ended a truck, a dump truck out there. Okay. Uh, the other one occurred yesterday at 1230 in the afternoon where there was a stone about the size of a cantaloupe uh, that a uh, car hit, uh, did some front-end uh, damage to it and also uh, a flat tire and front-end alignment that needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. So that's one of the things we've already reached out to the contractor, but yeah. as this just occurred yesterday, you're not aware of it yet. I did notice that the road was awfully dirty, and they're supposed to keep it clean. Um, so we'll uh, we'll get on that and try to get it cleaned up. Yeah. So Other than that, it's plugging along very nice. Yep, yep, very pleased so far. Any questions or comments for John? Okay. Thank you, John. You're Thank welcome. you. Uh, into the report section. Um, well, um, as far as reports, there are some period reports in front of you. I'd like to go over a couple of key things and not really uh, hit everything in there. But uh, a couple of things uh, I want to point out is uh, the, uh, the authority, despite our best efforts, was unsuccessful in the $2 million Tiger Grant. This was the $2 million of OBPA funds matched with $2 million of uh, uh, <coughs> federal funds if we were successful in that application. As you know, we went into that application um, having feedback from prior years. We had all our ducks in a row. Uh, we had uh, the engineering done. We had everything in place. Um, is there anything that we could have done better? Absolutely not in this case. Um, we had the support of the Watertown Times. We had public awareness support up and down the aisle. We had pictures uh, actually in the paper, as you recall of 23-inch uh, cracks in the bridge. Um, we had, we had uh, all the support that we could have possibly asked for for that. I have requested a uh, U.S. Tiger Ranking Committee debrief to find out, you know, the why and the how, but uh, obviously we're disappointed by that. <coughs> um, and I guess if it's, I don't want to say if it's any consolation, but if it's any consolation, the state of New York did very poorly in the uh, Tiger Awards as well. I think there were only two projects awarded in the state of New York. One was in the Bronx, and I can't recall the, the other uh, location. So obviously that's a huge disappointment, especially given our advocacy uh, right up through the U.S. Uh, right up through the U.S. DOT um, head guy. So I want to bring that out to front and center. We had... Uh, well, let me, let me make a comment because I think it's really important that the board is uh, so wholly supportive of this whole thought. Way. The determination has been a big part of our philosophy and things we're doing. And obviously our determination has not stopped yet. I mean, we have to continue this drive to make sure this bridge is what it is. The integrity of the bridge is an ultimate importance of everything we do here. But without it, we, we can close shop. Without it, we have. Uh, I don't know this new transportation bill. They're talking about three point or three hundred and twenty-five billion dollars is out there. Whatever. I'm not sure where that's going. Whatever. Maybe there's a big package out there waiting for. Maybe I don't know. But we our determination is we're not giving in. And I, I appreciate what you've done behind the scenes and everybody who's involved. That you know we're we're going to get this done somehow. Uh, there's a fundamental problem with infrastructure funding in this country. And I'll give an example. If you have a pothole out front of your house, the municipality in which you live does not have to win the lottery to fix that pothole. Yet that, for some reason, is how it's appropriate to fund bridge repairs. Uh, just fundamentally doesn't make sense. We will continue our efforts on this. We'll continue our advocacy efforts. And we will also step up our game uh, one additional notch 
uh, looking for a future placement in a New York State transportation bill and also the federal transportation bill. Uh, we've been doing that for a number of years. We'll continue to do that. But I just want to bring that to, to your attention. Other key things um, I want to discuss, the, uh, let's talk about the airport. Uh, we've got our permit. We've received everything that we need there, and that was due to our advocacy. We're accelerating things where we can on that because we're trying to meet the needs of uh, the business environment. At the port, um, there are a few things there that we need to talk about. One of which is the reason Grow Solar should be here today, and I apologize that it's supposed to be here. Um, there is a snag with the solar farm that is over in the industrial park. It's part of the NYSERDA award. Uh, we've been diligently working with the city of Ogdensburg on this issue because they also have a project, as do we. And the problem is with National Grid. Uh, there is an issue there that has come up. We've been jointly working together, and I was hoping they would be here today for an update on that. Um, other key things, we're working on the $10 million dock <coughs> expansion. We have uh, two parts of that project going on. We, as you know, we had the uh, Section 107 study from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers <coughs> that was going well and about nine months ahead of schedule. Um, in anticipation of that, we submitted to um, the uh, state government the need for the $10 million dock expansion because we thought it would take several years to, to get that money in place. Well, what happened is we got that money in place sooner, so now where the federal project was running ahead and the state project was way behind, the state project has now leapfrogged, <laughs> and the federal project is now way behind. So we're trying to bring those two together in time, because if we can get them on the same schedule, if you get a $3 million trench next to a $10 million dock wall, the project may only cost $11 million. So we're trying to figure, figure out how to, uh, how to take care of that. Uh, we have several labor-related things we'll talk about in the executive session, and that's kind of the, some of the key highlights, I think, that uh, you should be aware of. Maybe we could use that to our advantage that the, for once in anyone's life, the money is ahead <coughs> of the, the red tape, and maybe we could use that to push the federal, and if, if that's even possible, to push them. We're continuing our advocacy on that. I see we, we, we had a meeting with TSA. Yes. How did that go? How did that go? Um, the TSA, on the, as far as the terminal project, uh, that meeting went, I guess, reasonably well. That was the meeting where we found out that uh, anytime you try and touch that equipment, you've got a, I'm going to exaggerate for a fact, there's a 60-day decision time followed by a coordination meeting followed by... Um, you know, various other things that need to go on. That changed our strategy on how we deal with the airport terminal, and we're trying to minimize the amount of times that we touch anything to do with TSA or TSA-related equipment. Um, the reason for that being is it's not because the TSA aren't good people. They are good people. But they have a nightmarish process there <coughs> that to bring the terminal online in the time period we need, <coughs> it's easier to, I mean, if we had two years, we'd be great. But we don't. We have to be online in 362 days from now. So given that, the answer may be to shut down the TSA, basically for all intents and purposes, build a box around their equipment, lock the door, and we're good. As opposed to Moving touching it. the equipment, because if you touch it, there's $30,000. And then if you move it, there is another corresponding um, timeline associated with that. Then you've got to move it back another $30,000, another decision um, set that needs to go with that. And it would uh, significantly jeopardize the timeline. So we're trying to figure out ways around that to minimize that. <coughs> and to kind of wrap up the answer to that, that will ultimately mean that there will be a Cape Air or some kind of curtailment of service in a two-month period in either June or July or May or June of uh, 2016, where Cape Air will be operating more than likely out of our FBO as opposed to the um, as opposed to the terminal, which will be under construction. We couldn't we couldn't do that in the winter months. Once that say February March, 
I'm just <clears throat> looking at the weather conditions. How many times maybe last year that they cancel flights and stuff like that? that was um, we can look at that. I'm not sure it's that's feasible given the timing of the project itself. Mm -hmm. The project itself um, needed that terminal to be um, needed to get in there due to reconfiguration issues on the security space on the um, either May, June, June, July time frame. Yeah. But Doug, okay. just Jeff, do you know anything about that? Well, it, it will help the uh, on the <coughs> runway part yeah. to have the uh, terminal shut down in um, the good construction season will benefit them. There'll be some savings in costs there. Okay. So <coughs> to do it in the winter, we'd lose that on that end. So that's kind of the, there's a give and take on that one, but we figured, I don't know if we think in May or June or June or July, I don't know that yet. Yeah, but it's really an issue of phasing and when, you know, the, but the apron is an issue, the access taxiway as far as, and also the construction of the building. Yeah, you get quite a benefit on yeah. the uh, apron side of the construction. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions <coughs> I can answer for you on that or any other topic? Thanks. Well, I, I, I guess I'll make a general comment here, and I got some questions because I, I mean I've seen reports before, but I never saw a list of things that our staff people have been doing this last last month here, whatever. I mean, I looked through them, going, I, I don't know how anybody had time to. To make your report out. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot. Here. There's a lot here. I mean, I, I mean to yeah. me, you talk about I mean, reading things that are going on. It's like one thing after another. I'm going, what question would I want to ask? You know, in regards to all the specifics that are going on. So I, I they call it the John and John show. Or what you guys are doing, and Fred, with all the things you're you have to do with the changes you got in your department, and you know all the things are going on. I, do you guys want to give us any highlights or anything you want to talk about, John and John? Oh, we had an excellent uh, <coughs> span the U.S. workshop in the District Community Center. We had about 40 Canadian businesses in attendance. Some really good prospects, and two in particular that we're working with for building a letter. Yeah. So we're hopeful there that we'll get something. Okay. Place Dynamics is close to completing the white papers, so they're on schedule. Um, and continue to work with uh, McClellan and Bridge Track. Uh, I did notice one thing in the report about a hangar list. Yes, I have one person that's looking for a so hangar. We're full, we need one more or whatever. Yep. So, I mean, if we had more hangar space, I mean, would we have Jeff? I mean, somewhere in our thinking, okay, a uh, hangar space, you know, uh, not now, but yep. somewhere later on down the road if that business looks like it's we need space, you know, I guess something we got to think about, but not yet, but at least anyways. Well, there's a state funding program, you know, annually, to, and it's a great source of funding for hangers. Is it? Yeah. If you have a tenant lined up, the projects score very well, They're very successful. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that as well. That's uh, just so you're aware, the rest of the board is aware of the water and sewer going to the airport uh, terminal. Uh, we submitted a, an, an application uh, for that uh, to the New York State DOT Aviation Program. That went in this month as well. Yes, excellent. Steve, <coughs> you uh, nothing going on in your life? Nothing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just uh, one of the highlights I think I want to talk about is we're on the verge of uh, kind of going to a different level at the port. And I've worked with OMLC um, and We'll see some vessel activity within the next month, probably, I would say, three vessels. And one of them's a brand new product. And um, we've been working with OMLC to get that all coordinated. And um, there'll be a learning curve involved in that. So um, it's a challenge doing the planning. But having Adam here has been a great help. They've, he's, he's just at a different level than I am on that. But to have him there um, really makes me feel pretty good um, and um, we're really focusing on taking care of the client and um, I want to be as prepared as we can so that um, you know when the word gets out that we handled our first thing as you know hopefully as best we can um, that'll that will you know, that'll help toward other things for next year 
I, I, you know, uh, to me, the effectiveness of the court, I know we, we went through uh, you know, 980, you know, that piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. How is that working out? Great, great. And, and one of these vessels is going to be a salt ship, so we'll roll right back into that. And um, it's kind of a mixed blessing, and the nice weather is nice, but usually when you get your first snowstorm, then the salt starts moving over. But right now, everything just sits in sheds because it's not being used. So um, we'll be able to utilize that loader to uh, relocate the salt for the next month. So that's a that's a plus. It'll be it'll be used. Whereas if we didn't have anything coming in, we'd be <coughs> sitting there. So um, the timing on that was pretty good. I, I did a little research, and you know what what a 980 cost, and you know, obviously the price is up in the 400,000, 500,000 dollar range. They didn't realize it was that kind of money, but I did notice there are some pieces of equipment of at that price, they're pretty nice, whatever, and I said, wait, I said, how come we're not considering that thought of purchasing a piece of equipment? And he said, well, I think our logic is, is basically, let's see if this piece of equipment makes sense, and we might as well try it and see if it makes sense to buy it if you want to think about buying it a little bit later on, whatever, and so I guess maybe that's where my question to you is, and you answered it, is, you know, is that piece of equipment doing what you want it to do? Yeah. I mean, I hate to go buy something for five hundred thousand dollars, wherever the, the, the price tag, and say, "Wait a minute, it's not, it's not worth it." So yeah. I think, I think, you know, I think, to um, like I said, we're kind of rolling into another level, and I, if, if my expectations for next year, um, the questions we we have about rental and equipment will go away because we'll be that busy or that things will be utilized, so that you know you look at it and it'll it'll explain itself. You'll just see okay. things out there. That's my hope, I you know, there's no guarantees yeah. on that. But if 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 you can get multiple projects going on at one time, you'll just see the definitely see the benefit for that. You know, I'm I'm pretty confident on that. So that's kind of um, where we're. I'm hope we're headed. But um, you just know how that that business works. It could be everything we think it is, or it could be slow again. But mm -hmm. we're hoping. Uh, yeah. I, I just see some progress there, and there's going to be. Like I said, a learning curve, and um, to m there's going to be costs involved in getting started. But I think once we get going, um, that'll smooth out quite a bit. <coughs> but I'm, I'm pleased with the way it's headed so far. It's been slow, but you know, at the end of the year, I, I think uh, we'll be in better shape. And we, we don't know what type of products that we, we might be getting in next year. And you might need a different piece of equipment next year for different. You know, right. So, and, and, and you know, a lot of that is just um, depends on, for example, the client we have now. They've been throwing out some numbers mm -hmm. of uh, or, or wanting or showing interest in other things. So we're thinking, well, that, um, we do well with these one thing, and hopefully the market bears out over here. That'll uh, that'll um, encourage them to do more things with us. Mm -hmm. But I know being partners is definitely good. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. There's a lot of parallels to that photo that you see over on the wall there uh, with the uh, with the truck and the conveyor. Um, this is that situation all over again where we caught something uh, together at the beginning where we had the ag, ag conveyor and our tractor, then we le uh, leased a, a conveyor, then we did the economics on it and we proved that it made sense to buy it. We bought the con we bought the conveyor. Then we looked at the truck and we said, "Well, we need a truck." And that's you know, how this whole process goes. So we're in the we're in the same parallel process on this 980 loader right now. And you'll see other equipment that they're bringing to the table um, mm -hmm. for this product at the end of the month. Um, and we're going to have one of their conveyors in here today. And that's all part of that. That's all part of unloading the um, at the end of the month. Steve, are we going to speak up? Oh, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> this is a really good conversation because of two people that are sitting over there, and that's um, Joe and Peter from the uh, uh, Comptroller's Office. They're part of the uh, audit, and they're auditing our capital uh, and how, how we handle our capital and how we budget it. And I think <coughs> that kind of sums up the challenge we have in capital budgeting. We don't know what we need next year, and we're going to be doing the budget. And Steve and I and Wade will be uh, trying to decide what to put in the budget for these capital needs at the port. And uh, we may put in 
for a loader and we may end up needing something else. So I think it's a very interesting conversation for them to hear that how difficult it can become uh, as we're budgeting in the fall of one year for what we may need in the summer of the next year when we, you know, when our business is changing um, and, and we have uh, growth opportunities. So uh, I did want to mention too that they were here. I invited them to come. Um, uh, you know, they're here doing the audit. Good to, to uh, see you folks and, and see the, the board in action. Well, I, I, good morning, gentlemen. Nice to have you here. <laughs> and, and in all seriousness, one of the things that we've discussed in, in, the, in our process here is how to effectively use money to make money as well as use money to save money. And, and obviously the dynamics of what we're trying to do is, is theoretically look at every issue that we deal with to make sure that we do the best possible job. I mean, so, and that's what we do on a daily basis, uh, you know, with Wade and Fred and, and the staff here to, to do the best job we can with what we have. And uh, obviously the economics in this area are very difficult to get uh, the best bang for your buck, but we work hard every day to do that. And I appreciate you coming here, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, are we flexible enough down there? We get this product in and we want to get it out as efficiently as we can. Are we flexible enough to to extend hours to keep that open yeah. for trucks to, to yeah. come? And that, that goes with what I say with like um, serving the customer or the yeah. client to, to do that. Um, it's it's in our labor agreements and then also Wade's given me the flexibility. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to be customer oriented. Um, with everybody, mm -hmm. but um, uh, yes, we have that flexibility okay. Good. with that. And, we, and the more we can move, anytime we move that and have throughput, um, it frees up space, but it yep. also uh, turns the money over for us. So okay. Steve, nice. Steve, is this, uh, I obviously you said it's a new product. Is it a new company we're dealing with, too? Yes, and it's fertilizer. Just okay. so going to be urea. We dealt with urea <coughs> last year. Um, bagging. I, I don't know if you remember, but mm -hmm. there was a company in here, yep. and we bagged that. So, from a you know safety standpoint, we're all familiar with that. But it'll be more on bulk, and you'll be loading it into um, you know trucks right. and hauling it out of there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you and me are 100 percent right, and we only get one chance to make a first impression, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, we so yeah. you got we got to make sure, especially if we're talking uh, other potentially other things, we want to make sure. That the word gets out that it's a new product, a new company, and we did really well. With yeah, them. It, it brings a little more energy to our group down there. Yep. That we need a little more focus rather than you know it's road salt, it's grain, and right. the, the daily there. But um, I think with that activity and the energy, um, with that it, it it may improve. With you know, I'm going to say with our other customers that we're a little more aware of their needs. Right. This is one we've spoken about previously. If we if we can uh, manage this material and do a good job with it, this is that uh, potential right. five-year deal. Yep. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I guess we're ready for you. Okay. Um, before I go to the reports or, or the uh, financial reports here, I will just mention that uh, that is one bullet. Uh, you know that we are providing information and answering questions for uh, the OSC capital maintenance audit. It's one little line on here, but I think they would probably agree that it's, uh, uh, you know, we, we it takes time and uh, uh, and it's a, it's a big part of what we're doing right now. Uh, also, I think important, we've started the, the new software for the toll booth. Um, working with the old software is like reading the Constitution of the United States. You have to handle it very, very carefully. And uh, we, it's, it's uh, very, I don't know, fragile is the right word, but it's old. As, and and you, we made it, you made a, a wise decision uh, to go forward with the new software, uh, and that's getting started. Um, Can I just add to that? Yeah, mm -hmm. briefly. Um, I also want to give you a heads up. You're going to get a complaint if you have not already received it. Uh, back on September 29th, our southbound commuter lane went down. Um, again, you're troubleshooting, uh, you're trying to troubleshoot a system that they have to pull a gentleman out of retirement that knows the programming. Um, the thing is ancient. And to make a long story short, there's been a problem. The problem was identified to be the controller um, in there, but that identification only took place yesterday. They have been working on this feverishly. 
but it has been it's ancient equipment out there. So some of the some of the issues that, again I want to brief you on this because if someone in the community comes to you and says, hey, we bought a commuter card, how come we can't use the southbound lane? You need to know why. It's ancient equipment. It's going to be replaced in online by March 31st of 2016. In the meantime, we're working very hard to get that lane up and running, but we're dealing with old parts, a third-party vendor, and machines that look like they're 386 vintage out there. And that's not a good combination. We're working on it, but I do expect uh, we will have complaints, and by extension, you will probably receive those complaints in the community. Are we, we informing the people when they come in to buy their commuter books again that this is a problem? And uh, no, we're not, but we're working on a common sense workaround. The problem appears to be the controller in the gate. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's, there's a way you can disable the gate, leave the gate in the up position, scan the card, and let the, let the uh, individual through. <coughs> So we're trying to figure out how to do that. In the meantime, we've got a choice of do we have the northbound commuter lane open or the southbound. We've only got one controller to operate the two lanes. Our spare um, burned up a couple of years ago on that, and these things are so old they can't be replaced. Hence the reason that we made the decision to replace the toll system. But and they can still use the card. Uh, they just have to use it in the uh, slower lane. So. Not that they can't take advantage of the savings, they still have the savings. It's just the convenience of being able to go through at five miles an hour. Yeah, that was my question, if they yeah. could still use it during... Yeah, they could still use it. Okay. Exactly. I just want to brief you on that in case you have any questions. Where, where do we stand with the electronic inventory control at the port? It seems like we've been working on that for ages. We we got the inventory put in yesterday morning, and this morning I came in at 7, went straight over to the port, and it's live. So everything's settled, and then we're all set down there now. Yep, up and running. Um, this morning, yesterday afternoon, they came and worked on the scale a little bit. So it was not hooked up this morning, but we were able to get it going, and we had two grain trucks come through mm -hmm. with no problems. Wait a minute and out. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It has been a challenge. Yes. It really has. Um, that's about it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on, uh, starting the budget, uh, <coughs> and uh, we're operating with uh, temporary personnel, as you know, and uh, that's working well. They're, they're doing a good job. So, one of the financial reports. Can I have okay. sure. a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, under analysis, the first yes. bullet there, this is in, uh, at the end and devise the procedure to collect yes. paid wages. Is yeah. that in case it happens or it did no, happen? No, it did happen and it's in place to mm -hmm. collect it. The, uh, uh, when we put the paycheck time clock in, we, uh, for the most of the employees, or every, everyone except the port workers, the uh, lunch time was in the software being pulled out, so you didn't get paid to eat lunch. That was not the case at the port. We didn't recognize it. And uh, it occurred for a, quite a period of time, and uh, uh, I made calculations to determine how much that was, and uh, starting with this payroll, it's being paid back. Just to uh, further add to that, now that this has been brought up in the board forum, you'll also receive the same notification that the audit committee received. We discovered a uh, payroll weakness that was exploited. We immediately shut down that uh, weakness and strengthened the process. Uh, there were four individuals that needed uh, specific uh, wages recouped as a result. We convened the audit committee, advised the audit committee, involved council. Uh, to make sure that we were on the on the right side of everything in terms of the recouping of wages, and then went ahead and did it. So that's kind of where we are. But you don't have some of that information because, unfortunately, you're not on the audit committee. But uh, now that we this did, is brought up, you'll get a copy of that. We did take responsibility for uh, about half of it because of the error in the system. So it was in the time cards. No, it was in the time. It was in the. It was in the time <coughs> clock. Clock. It's a biometric clock. So now it, it, my assumption was it was programmed to take everyone's lunch out, and that wasn't the case. 
Mr. Chairman, yes. if we're going to discuss this further, should we do this in executive uh, session? That's what I like. Because, I mean, I'm not saying we need to, but if we're going to talk about specific employees and wages and stuff like that, we should probably do this in executive session. Yeah, I mean, as long as we don't talk about specific right, employees. Right, right. Um, I mean, facts of the matter, $32,000 in wages were overpaid. Um, part of it was a payroll process weakness. We accounted for $16,000 of that. Uh, the other $16,000 was uh, uh, recouped through five individuals, one of which is de deceased. Uh, so we only went to four individuals, and that was uh, fully disclosed to the audit committee. I don't know if there are any other questions. Be happy to answer. Well, obviously we found the error, and, and that'll end it, end right there. The error not occurred since we found it in uh, fixed it in <coughs> July. Uh, the uh, first and what will be the uh, financial report? Uh, bridge total income is off 185,000. That is down 17.8 percent. When we get to the bridge report, you'll see that traffic is down 19.8 percent. I believe some of that is the mix, but it also uh, says that while well, we're not exactly certain of our traffic counts because of the uh, unreliability of the system that it's that is directionally correct for sure and, and really not that far off when you think 19.8 and 17.8 17.8 on the revenue 19.8 on the count and there is that you know trucks are uh, are down much less than autos trucks bring us more revenue so I think, and I haven't made that calculation, but I think it's uh, very close uh, on the revenue and the counts being uh, being in sync. Uh, rental income is uh, <coughs> is down 172,000 from budget. Uh, 50,000 of that continues to be um, on the bridge side at the Amex. Our uh, revenue there is based upon or is goes very similar with bridge traffic, and uh, it's based upon their sales, so that's off. Uh, also, we had budgeted about fifty thousand in income from vacant space that remains vacant, uh, so that's part of the one seventy two. Uh, another one was the two uh, rentee or uh, leases that we have that uh, left us, the one that we evicted and the other one that left in the night. Uh, all that adds up to um, about 174 of the 172,000. Um, you can see that the, uh, if you remember from last month, the port operating revenue and the port storage was just about right on budget. Now that's improved. Um, <coughs> I had a ship in right around the, right on the 1st or 2nd of October. That made that difference. The OMLC uh, is on the next page. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, airport operating revenue is strong, mostly because of fuel sales. Uh, other income is now, we have now recognized the uh, Market New York administrative grant. We still have not applied for those funds, but we've calculated them. We will be applying in the next few days. But we had them calculated, so I accrued them. Um, on the expense side, salaries are down, and most of that is because of our two people that are here. Not most of it, but some of it. Uh, other is just the, uh, uh, well, I don't know what the other is. The uh, benefits are in sync with the wages, but also we're going to be recognizing, I've recognized some of it, we'll be recognizing more of it, is the uh, retirement uh, that we pay in is much less than budgeted. So that's saving us some money. Um, interest expense is up, uh, mostly because of the lines of credit. That's not the whole 58, and I have not had a chance to see what additional things is, is hitting us there on interest. Um, 
Utilities, that was a seasonal thing. When I put the budget together, I just divided by 12. I should have made the budget more seasonal. Uh, we'll be seeing that $72,000 plus uh, go away over the winter because uh, you know, that's when we have more utilities, natural gas to heat the buildings and so on. Legal fees are way up. We will send out a report on those that's not ready yet today. We'll send it out to you hopefully by the end of the week. We'll, we'll try to get it out by the end of the week. Under other professional services, the, some of the savings that we have in salaries and wages are being picked up here. That's where the uh, <coughs> temporary people are charged. Uh, of that 24, that's about 20,000 of that. That was not budgeted. And um, this 45,000, uh, again, some of that is, uh, is uh, se or not seasonal, but I divided up the maintenance and service fees over the entire year, divided by 12, but they come all at once. And that's some of that. Um, but I don't have a, an analysis of the whole 45,000. Fred, you said under other income that yes. uh, the mar uh, market, you, New, York, New York, how much we got coming from that? Uh, um, right we, we have 10% of the uh, 972,000, so right around 100,000. And we haven't applied for that. We yet. haven't asked for that. We've we have so far asked for around four hundred thousand, haven't we? Uh, so, so we'll, we're looking we'll, at a hundred thousand for our yes, yes, yep. And it's difficult because we have to prove it. I think you know my understanding, which wasn't good, was that you automatically get it. And what we found out as soon as we got the grant is we have to prove that we that, that we had that expense, and that's uh, that is uh, difficult. It's more so, burden on our side. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot more burden than than we had expected or that I had expected at least. I think we talked about that when we were getting into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, Let me ask you this question because this really got me a little bit, and this was thinking ahead a little bit. And I look at our uh, our meeting dates, whatever it want to be, and we're so close to the first of the first week of the month. But are, are we putting undue pressure where you can't get the numbers quick enough and uh, put together in a way that? Uh, um, how's well, that? I mean, are we doing the right thing for you or the wrong thing? I mean, I don't know. How okay, you're doing the wrong thing. If if you want. A, a thorough analysis of this. I right. don't have time to do it. Right. I, I actually came in over the weekend in order to get this. I know you do. Yeah. And because I think you need to see this. Right. Absolutely. But I, but I just don't have time to analyze it um, thoroughly. I mean, I, I did the best I could on, th on, on the bigger things uh, in a short amount of time. But, uh, you know, to say you're doing the wrong thing, I think you need to have your meeting when you need to have it. I need to be able to provide you with the information as best I can uh, around that. So don't change the meeting, uh, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things involved in a meeting and, and timing of a meeting and so on. If the most important thing you saw was this report and you want, and the most important thing was a thorough analysis of this, then you're doing the wrong thing. But if that's not the most important thing at this meeting and the most important thing you hear, because I can provide this to you after this meeting. So don't change your meeting for this, but if you want a thorough analysis, tell me and I'll provide it to you. I would also add one of the things that the board has been very flexible on, and, and we appreciate it, is the fact that if there is a question that comes up, uh, what we do is we answer that and then we send that out to the send that out to the board immediately after. I wouldn't advise moving the date because if you if you recall some of you have been on the board for a long time. Um, once upon a time, you used to get uh, October statements in January. Um, they are of no use at that point. So, I mean, you're getting real time, pretty close to real time information here, and you see the main story is we need more revenue coming in the door. That's valuable because that affects the, the thinking, that affects everything that we're going to do in the rest of the meeting today. And if we move the meeting to mid month or just for the convenience of being able to have every single item um, answered there, I, I don't think that would be a concern. I, I just put it out there for what the effective use of your time mm -hmm. and, and our time that, you know, these meetings, I know we've been doing it so long time, whatever, and I'm thinking, 
Well, I mean, is this really under pressure in certain situations? And are you really uh, feeling that you're not really giving the report that you really want to give at the level you want to give? I mean, uh, yes, you give us reports. Yes, you give us the numbers. But really, in essence, okay, where you're using your time and your pressure to give time, that's not really the best way to sort of way to do it. I mean, so that's all I'm asking you. I, I know you want to do what, what's best for everybody, but I, I just I wanted to put that out there for you. I mean, uh, us, we're... Mm -hmm. you know, well, I look at this, and, and I know what I would ask. So that's what I try to answer. Okay. Um, uh, and, and what I will do is provide a little better answers on these yeah. questions that... Uh, By that the I, way, it's not a criticism. It's just mm -hmm. a suggestion to, you know, to be as effective as possible again how we do these things. What would be the difference for other parts of our business that if we met, as you said, a week later versus continuing... I, I personally don't know. I mean, right. these and are the people that have to go I, through the schedule. Again, so it's not, a, not, yeah. not questioning anybody, just asking a question. If it would make for a better meeting overall to have it a week later, then maybe we should have it a week later. If all the other stuff should be reported earlier in the month, then maintain it where it is. But uh, for me, which is, I, I like to know the uh, financial stuff as accurately as we possibly can. Yeah. But if there are other things that are going on that are more important earlier in the month, then leave it where it is. Yeah. But I, I don't think we've got, I don't think we've received an answer on what your question is. I think it would be better for uh, Fred, but what about the rest of the team? Would it be That's better right. earlier? Or Everybody's is involved. it okay to wait a week? Uh, yeah. well, I think that's something to discuss, uh, you know, as you formulate the schedule for next year's meetings. Well, we got a schedule in front of us here, that's which right. we're talking about again. So, and we got a bunch of meetings coming up shortly, <coughs> so uh, we'll talk about that again, too. So, uh, like, I think one of the most important things on here that I did not mention is under operating, you see that we're 211,000 uh, behind what we budgeted there. That was over 300000 last month. So <coughs> if we can improve at that rate, uh, you know, uh, it'll be fantastic. And I think that opportunity is there with these products coming into the port. So that's what I was going to say. We got, yeah. we got three ships coming in. Yeah, three ships coming in. <coughs> and uh, some of these numbers have changed drastically in the next yes. couple of months. Yes. Yes. Well, next month, it's middle of the month anyway. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. No excuses for me next month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next, the next uh, report is the OMLC. That hasn't changed much from last month, except the. Can, can the I just back up to the yeah, other sure. one under expenses? And you were explaining mm -hmm. the salaries and wages. And yeah. then Down below, I think under other professional services, you were right. saying that twenty-four three fifty-one is. Mostly attributed to the fact that we had to have temporary. Yes. So we're really looking at under salaries and wages is about forty thousand, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 That's exciting and excitement into accounting. <laughs> <laughs> so on the uh, OMLC report, the only thing that changed from last month is that the expense for OMLC went up a little, uh, as it does every month. Not much. You know, that just shows what they have, in my opinion, have have contributed to this instead of looking at those two lines and how they were budgeted. They will not be budgeted that way next year. Bridge traffic um, off 18.5% for October, 20.7% down on autos, uh, up 1% for trucks. You can see the uh, year to date along the bottom, down 19.8%. And I continue to believe that that's the uh, Canadian dollar driving most of that. Have we, looked, have we looked at the other bridges to see where they stand? Uh, I haven't this month because the report hasn't come out yet. In fact, okay. I haven't reported ours yet. Okay. I will. I had them to go across the bridge to go see the pumpkin thing up at the uh, Upper Canada. 
Huh? And there's construction as soon as you get off the bridge. Oh, right. If you get on to 401 or whatever, uh, it's a, that's quite not a mess. Our, that's I don't think that's helping either. us at all. No. It's really no different going across the Messina Bridge because we went over to dinner with some friends and we got lost trying to find a bridge on the way back. Yes. <laughs> There's no <laughs> signage. No. It's you know, it says bridge this way and then all of a sudden you come to an intersection and the road's blocked because they're tearing out the other bridge. So we took a right. Unfortunately, it was the wrong turn. We had to come back left, and we finally found the road to get out. We actually ended up going back exactly the same way we came in, but on the side street. So. Stuck in Canada. <laughs> Just a, a quick note. You recall I mentioned that Scotiabank economist that we talked to last year that predicted exactly what we saw. We'll be meeting with him and, uh, next week. So we'll get some view about what, they, what their outlook is for Canada. Next year. Wait, when are, you, when are you meeting with them? That's part of the Highway H2O meeting in uh, Toronto. Oh, it's in Toronto. Next week. Next um, it two weeks. Week. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. 17th through 19th. Yes, that's right. 17th through 19th. The uh, next report is the airport activity report. Our fuel sales continue strong, up a couple hundred gallons from last year in uh, October. I did not get the numbers from Cape Air. I believe there's a new station manager. Um, I've got to get, I think I'll have to go out there. I'm going to be there Friday because I'm going to pick up my son coming in from Boston on Cape Air. Uh, but it's ticket this morning. So there will be an additional one for <laughs> <laughs> next. Um, so, but you can see that, uh, that we're doing very well on fuel sales, and you saw that in the uh, financial report. It's up 28%. Uh, yeah, the executive jet market with the net jets and mm -hmm. the rental, that whole thing has entered into us. We see a lot of the net jets yeah. and they call ahead and uh, we've been fueling them about all hours. So that's that's really driving a lot of that. I think I asked this question last time, but I'm sure you covered my memory. <coughs> Hope I answer it the same. <laughs> <laughs> because I won't remember. <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> The the fuel sale in gallons has increased twenty eight yes point one four. I was wondering what the, that would uh, transfer to in what dollars. In other words, you can sell as many gallons as you want. Right. If you weren't getting uh, a, a dollar uh, that kind of matches it, then you know maybe we ought to consider looking at what the price is. If is our dollar percentage up 28 percent or is our dollar percentage it's obviously up selling more gallons i would guess okay so i don't remember the question the so i think it is a new question okay uh, the uh Profit early on down. in the year or toward the end of 2014 we were uh our, our sales were down but not early on in the year it was early on uh it, it was prior to this report so um and I adjusted some of our markups because I thought this fuel needed to needed to move. Um, since then, that's changed. We've been very fortunate on timing. Uh, we order when we need to. We don't order according to the price of fuel, but we've been fortunate. So uh, I believe that our and, and I'll look and so I'll have that answer for you. But I believe that our uh, revenue is probably up more than twenty eight. Because okay. of our the, timing. the timing of it, the timing is yeah. Fantastic. Because we may have a, we may have eight thousand that we bought low, and the, you know it goes up. Exactly. So there, there's like three factors to figure that. It's a little yes. difficult, but you could do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll well, I think it's some, you know one of those things that's mm -hmm. important when you look at that number. Are you automatically assuming that's what our income mm -hmm. has increased? Or what is it? that's all? Just yeah. just another the, little the, thing uh, for you to do. Maybe I was just sitting here thinking I was going to ask that. Maybe, but, it, but it, I think it's a good question. But I and I think it's something that'll be interesting to look at. But uh, I think we'll find that that just my sense is that it, that our profit is is uh, it's not affected by a, a low price. We're not we're not driving them here with a bargain on. Our time is so now we, now you create a problem. Somebody who's going to watch this thing on TV is going to go back and say, "I'm going to play it back and see how you answered that question <laughs> yeah. the last time." <laughs> that's, <laughs> so, so. Yeah. that's right. See if my answer is. <laughs>
Uh, uh, the last report is the credit card report. Uh, this, I think for, this, let me stop a second. For, for the audience or whatever, what happened here was we did not offer credit card juicing, whatever. Uh, you're probably aware of that. And so when we decided, so maybe we explained to everybody again okay. why we did it and what the rationale behind it, because this is something that we didn't do until... I think for years and years and yeah. years, our fear was that uh, because of the small transactions, the $2.75% credit card transactions, that our percentage of fee would be so high as to make it not feasible to use credit cards. You know, we could get up into, uh, I predicted it to be 6 to 7%, uh, and it's been 3.44% since we've had them in. Uh, we were able to get a low per transaction fee. They have percentages, the percentages are all the same, but the, the real cost for, for an organization that has small transactions is the per transaction fee. Uh, we were fortunate to get in our RFP a bid that was low on the per transaction fee, and uh, and this has worked out pretty well because we have collected more revenue from larger transactions than from small transactions. People are still paying cash for their two dollars and seventy five cents uh, most often, and but they're replenishing their cards with their credit cards, and they are in, in times paying uh, of their rent bill with a credit card. So our transactions have been larger, it's kept our fees down, and, and our transaction amount is growing. And it grew in October from 10,000 to 11,000, and our fee was only 3.56% for October. And, and it did it in October despite the fact of a lot of inconvenience uh, in using the cards and in processing the cards, because on October 1st we got the new chipped cards, machines the new chip card processing machines. And uh, we've had some real issues around that. There's still issues in the booth. I have ordered pin pads now. Right now they have extension cords. They have to hand them out so people put their pin number in. Uh, all this is to increase the security, improve the security for people. Um, the, the pin pads should be here maybe even today. Um, and. Uh, it's been it's been a, it's been very difficult because of the change, and it's all across the credit card industry, all across the country. On October first was the magic day when people went to. If you didn't go to the chip card machines, you're liable for any fraud that takes place. So we went to them, and uh, it's beginning to smooth out. But it didn't seem to hurt business. We went up another thousand dollars in processing, you know, 10% up, despite the, uh, well, I thought it would be way off because of the yeah, Well, I, I think an important element here when we, when we thought about this process is uh, an employee had piles and piles of cash to count mm -hmm. and things we ever want to do, and so how do we eliminate that cash counting efforts right. or whatever? So I think yes. it was a labor savings that we didn't realize that mm -hmm. somebody was taking what, that long to count all the cash and, right. and go whatever, so. <coughs> That's, plus, that's where the, plus don't forget about the back office transactions that are limited in two. We no yeah. longer have to chase the customers that didn't have the 275, send letters to Canada for the whole collection yeah. process, oh. staff time. This is any time that you can spend $4,000 to get the customer convenience up and our costs down, that's yeah. money well spent. One of the machines that we received was programmed for a company in California. Um, $172 went to that company in California, we have recovered that. So yeah. <laughs> they couldn't believe it themselves, the people at Key Bank and at uh, Avalon. Al Al uh, it wasn't even one of Avalon's customers. It wasn't even one of their customers. So how no that one got knows in. how the card machine got programmed. But uh, we noticed it on the second day that we used it, uh, but it was. Um, the second day that we used it, we noticed it on the thing, but that was seven days later, you know, when, when we noticed when we were doing the uh, counting bridge traffic, getting things done. Uh, so it was about seven days worth of business, I think, on that one machine, even though it was the second day of receipts that was where it was spotted. And it was going to a company in California. It was, it was 
quite bizarre, but we did recover the fund. That it should have been a bullet on my thing. <laughs> that took a lot of yeah. a lot of effort. <laughs> any questions about any of the reports? Fred, I don't think that you'll you know, because of the fact that you know they're using the pin pads and stuff. I don't think it will affect us that much. And the reason being, Canada's having for years. So yes. the people from Canada are used to doing that. Used to it. Okay. Used to doing it. I mean, they've had the chips for years, and so I don't think it'll. It might affect other places more, but I don't think it'll affect us in the convenience. Um, and, and to echo what Fred said, I mean, it's a, it's a federal banking law now. Like, for example, if we opted not to get the new ones, there's, like, let's give, for example, you used to go to, uh, let's say, Stewart's, and somebody used your card at Stewart's, and you would dispute it with the bank. The bank would have to would look into it and pay you back those fees. You go to Stewart's now, and if Stewart's doesn't have the new reader, Stewart's is liable for it. So it doesn't come, it's not back on the bank. And there's huge fines um, per day for not having, being in compliance with it. So um, there's going to be glitches, but I'm sure that uh, it'll it's get better as you go along. That company in California, I w would imagine from the nature of their business, must have wondered why they were getting two dollars seventy-five cent charges. Right. <laughs> 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 Anything else for Fred? Thank you, Fred. Uh, go soldier. You want to do the presentation? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, r I recommend that uh, at this time uh, we hear from the representatives of Go Solar for the presentation regarding the TV uh, farm in the industrial park. And I see John here. John? Yep. Thank you. And Ben Welcome. from Larson is here as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And we have some presentations to hand out. Okay. Go along with us. Just as a quick reminder, we are in public session, so mm -hmm. obviously if there's anything that's business confidential, mm -hmm. hang on to it. members of the board, thank you guys for having us. Not sure where I should stand or what I should do. This is fine. All right, this is fine. Right. So, uh, John Miller from Grow Solar. Um, I'm here with Ben from Larson. Uh, ben, you introduce yourself briefly. Ben Favorite, Larson Engineers. Uh, we're assisting Grow Solar on the project providing uh, a variety of engineering services. Yeah. <clears throat> so, this project, the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority project, has been in development for uh, over a year at this point, um, and we wanted to come in to give a brief update as to the status of the project. Uh, specifically, there's been a lot of movement over the last month, and I think Wade just wanted uh, you know, uh, an official update. So um, the presentation starts with a brief project overview, um, nothing that we need to specifically get into. Um, you know, These are essentially just the stats of the project, where they were. And one thing you'll notice is that um, our original estimate for notice to proceed, notice to proceed means construction start, was supposed to be Q3 of this year. Um, obviously part of the reason I'm here is because that has changed and I want to explain what's happened for that change and how we're proceeding. Um, you know, and, and commercial operations were supposed to be Q4 of this year, uh, but we are going to be a little delayed on that. Um, and feel free please to stop and ask me any questions while I'm talking or you, know, you can ask more at the end. I you know, have a quick you know, aerial view of the project. It's over at uh, Tibbetts Road or Tibbetts Drive, I believe. Uh, it's a, we're taking up about 10 acres of, of land there for the solar project, and we're going to be connecting to the national grid system. The next slide is really something to uh, focus on is the project development activities, and the check marks means they've been completed. So as you can see, we have a, a extensively uh, developed this project. We would call it pretty much fully, really at this point, we'd call it fully developed from a site side. We've done all the environmental studies. 
Uh, we've gotten all the uh, local jurisdiction approvals, etc. So this project is almost to the point of what we would consider, consider shovel ready. And the one thing that's keeping us from being shovel ready uh, and being able to issue that notice to proceed to start construction is the final interconnection report from National Grid. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But that is really what has delayed us in our development and will delay the start of our construction. Uh, but, you know, and I'll get into what steps we've taken to move that forward. Uh, so as you see here, the conclusion is that we've completed all the necessary development for this site. The site is ready for construction. So the next slide here is just a brief summary of what's happened with National Grid to date. I don't have to go over each specific date, but one thing I would like to focus on is that we were expecting the receipt of our final study on August 26th. That's when the National Grid, you know, their timeline was to give us the final study. Um, on August 17th, you know, about one week earlier, we got a call from National Grid, and that call said, hey, we made a mistake. Uh, we didn't notice that there was a hydro facility a couple miles away from your project. Uh, we didn't take that into account. Sorry. <laughs> but in order to connect your project, it's going to take over a million dollars of upgrades. It's going to take over a year to install these upgrades. So obviously we were uh, taken by surprise. Uh, the initial study that we did receive from National Grid way back in March of this year actually stated you know, there was going to be no substation upgrades required. So this was obviously something that took us out of left field. And you know, National Grid did admit that they made a mistake here, which is something they won't do quite often. Um, so since then, we have been working very closely with National Grid. And I also have to commend Wade, who has been working very closely with me and has been an incredible, uh, help, very helpful in speaking with National Grid and getting it across. So we had uh, a meeting with National Grid on the 14th in Syracuse which uh, Wade attended, um, in which we laid everything out on the table. And in this situation, um, it's a little more complicated uh, because the city of Augsburg project was slated for the same circuit. So they had the same problem. So we decided to move our interconnection point to, um, there's another line to the south of the site located by the railway. Uh, so we've decided to move, but the city decided to move as well. So we're in a very similar boat to the city of Augsburg. And they have the same exact issues that we're having right now. So we had a joint meeting on the 14th, which we met with National Grid. Uh, we explained that, uh, you know, in our opinion, uh, we, were, we were looking for two things. We were looking for assistance on the schedule. Schedule-wise, they were saying the upgrades were going to take over a year, which is not acceptable. The project is fully developed and ready for construction. Um, as well as they were saying the cost for the upgrades were going to be uh, very high. So even though once we move from the current point to the, to the new point of connection, um, which is down at a, that southern line, which is a 22 kV line, they were still saying certain substation upgrades would be required, which would cost in upwards of $400,000 plus, um, which are very high costs for uh, this project. You know, it's out of market costs for the project. So, we had a meeting with National Grid, um, and what they agreed to do was to evaluate alternate technology to use. And the idea for that alternate technology is that it could potentially decrease costs while decreasing the timeline. Because just as important as the cost is, the timeline is. Because we wanted to deliver the project to you guys in a timely fashion. Uh, you know, you, you were talking for long, uh, lots of details about the financials. And this project, what it does is deliver savings to the Bridge and Board Authority. So we want to start delivering those as soon as possible. Uh, so, you know, at that meeting, they said that they were going to review options and get back to us. And we actually had a call uh, on uh, Monday, the 2nd, and National Grid, Grid did come back to us. And uh, to give you guys a brief update uh, as to the status of the project now, is that National Grid has identified a alternate technology that could be used that is less expensive and has a shorter time frame. Uh, they were reviewing it at the time of the 14th, but now they've looked at it and decided that it is feasible. It is a pilot project for National Grid. While they have done it in Massachusetts, they've never done it here in New York. Uh, so it's a, you know, they've actually, because of this and because of the mistake they've made and they've admitted that they've made, they have, you know, unofficially said that they're going to do a cost share with us and the city's project. Where for those substation upgrades, we're each going to share equally in the cost. 
So whereas initially we were expected to cover all of it or to share it with just the city, National Grid has said, now we don't have it in writing yet, but they have said that they're going to st step up and take part of that cost. And additionally, they said that they're going to step up and they're going to try to get this project online faster. So to give you an idea on the expected schedule, um, with, when we, with the initial, their initial indications were that the upgrades weren't going to be completed until Q3, Q4 of next year which is a very long time frame. They were, they were saying it was going to take 12 months to do the substation upgrades. Uh, with this new technology, they've come back and said if we were to uh, proceed in December, they would be able to have the substation upgrades completed by the end of June. So that is, it's still not exactly where we wanted to be. You know, our hope and our schedule was for March, April for that to be done. Uh, but, but June is a lot better than November, December. So I've got to jump in here and, and ask a, ask a question. Now, with this with this commercial operation date now updated to be June July 2016, mm -hmm. does that uh, I know the conversation with Nicer and Nicer was willing to extend the extend mm -hmm. the grant. I assume there's been uh, no change there. The um, how does that impact the grow solar? Larson side of the project because the reason I ask that question is the city's project is in tough straits right now. I mean, they've got two million dollars of parts and pieces on the ground and they cannot connect to the system along the same same timeline. So at the end of the day, somebody's having to pay interest on all those parts and pieces sitting on the ground while the, while the thing isn't in service until June, July 2016. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, your project's not, or our project, I guess, is not in the same boat because the equipment hasn't been purchased and sitting on, on the ground. Do you see, are there any threats to the project at this point with, it sounds like National Grid's uh, come around in that meeting on, on Monday. Um, it sounds like they've lowered the cost on that project killer fee uh, that, that was in there. And the timeline is June, July 2016. Do you see are things back on track now, or are things still off the rails? I mean, there's my mm -hmm. fundamental question yep. right there. So we're expecting the final, it's called final CSERS, the final interconnection study and report from National Grid by the end of the week. That is when they told us that we would have it. Okay. That will define for us the actual schedule and cost. You know, I, they told me over the phone, but it's, you know, nothing formal. So hopefully to have that by the end of the week. But to answer your question, if that comes in as we're expecting, no. We wouldn't say there's any fatal flaws. And part of the reason I've asked Ben here from Larson is that you know if you refer back to the slide where I had all the check marks for the development that was complete, you know, these are all items that are complete and make the site shovel ready. And if you had any questions on anything specifically, that's why I wanted Ben here because his firm has been instrumental in getting all these things done and complete. So the only thing holding us back here has been the interconnection. And as that is wrapping up or, or, or coming to a conclusion, your site is fully ready to go. And once the interconnection piece is figured out, uh, our next step is, quite honestly, to finalize all of our engineering designs. We're going to share it with the authority so you guys can review it and approve our, our final design uh, for the site. Uh, but the only thing that we're waiting on is national grid. So once that's done, my opinion is that there are no further obstacles for the project being constructed albeit in a, in a further time frame than we initially expected or quite frankly wanted for us and for the authority.